morning. Welcome to everyone on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost, second to last Sunday in the church year. So we're getting close to the end of another church year. Uh, we have, uh, we will have Advent services coming up at the beginning of December. You will be hearing a little bit more about those. Um, today is the day of our LYF Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, we invite all of you to uh, stay for that if you are able. Uh, we have both uh, both dine-in and carry-out options this year, so um, that that will take place after the, the service uh, down in the fellowship hall. We will have a table prayer at the end of the service for those who are staying for, for dinner. So uh, we'll be uh, we will we will be doing that after the last hymn. Um, confirmation continues this week uh, before we break for a week for Thanksgiving. Uh, also, Ricketts Bible study will be going on this week. Elders meet seven o'clock on Wednesday evening, so that is uh, the, the monthly elders meeting. Uh, there. TAP, we continue to collect for TAP. There's a table in the back now, uh, so uh, you uh, are able to bring your items. Uh, the, the most needed items are listed in the bulletin. Uh, there's a note here about uh, the cookie and candy bazaar for the LWML, which will be held on December 5th. Uh, anyone in the congregation can uh, bring, uh, can make cookies to be, uh, to be sold at the, the cookie and candy bazaar. Uh, they need to be here at church on by noon on December 4th, um, and uh, we also have a new option this this year. Uh, we'll box we'll make a mystery box of cookies for you that you may pick up at the kitchen door if you are not staying in uh, or, or uh, not boxing up the cookies yourself. Uh, you they, they, the LWML would appreciate it if you would reserve the mystery boxes so they can have them ready for you. Okay. Uh, also. Coming up is a benefit for uh, Blakely Christensen. There's a thank you from Andrew and Morgan for uh, the, 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 uh, the response they've received so far. Uh, but another, uh, another group uh, is uh, having a benefit on Saturday, December 11th at the Charter Oak Community Buildings. You'll be hearing a little bit more about that uh, in, in future days. But there are contact people there if you have questions. Wendy Moss, Carlene Becker, Amy Masick are uh, the contact people for this for this event. Okay, I believe that's all the 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 uh, bullet announcements that we have today. Uh, we will begin our service in a moment, and the first hymn is number 645, built on.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in, his, in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who endures to the end, let Mount Zion be glad. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers. That you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The one who endures to the end. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord, by your bountiful goodness, release us from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our weakness we have brought upon ourselves, that we may stand firm until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 25th Sunday after Pentecost is from Daniel chapter 12. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 10. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. The Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues. And you will stand before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The 
children are invited to come forward for the children's message. Well, good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing today? Anybody staying to eat turkey after the service? Have, have turkey dinner? I'm really looking forward to that. You know what time it is? It's at 11 o'clock, right? 11 o'clock is after service. So I brought my clock with me. Okay, This is a clock that I have in my bedroom. What does it say right now? What time is it? Can you read it? What time is it? 10.21. Okay. Oh, it just turned to 10.22. All right. So at 11 o'clock, I am really looking forward to having turkey dinner. So so um, I want you to watch the clock for me, okay, and tell me when, 11 when it's 11 o'clock. All right. I'm going to set it right here. Can you see it? Can you see it? It's, the, it's kind of a dark. You need, it's, I need to. Do I have a backlight on this? If I did, I need it. I need you to tell me, is it, 10, is it 11 o'clock yet? No? Okay, not 11 o'clock yet. Well, I guess I have to wait a little longer for my turkey dinner. Okay. How about now? Is it 11 o'clock yet? No? <sighs> Time goes really slow when you're, wanting some, when you're looking forward to something, doesn't it? Have you ever had that happen to you? I'm not going to make you wait until 11 o'clock to tell me that it's 11 o'clock. That would be a long time. 10.22. It's still only 10.22. You mean I'm not, even a minute has... Oh, now it's 10.23. Okay, there is a minute that has gone by. Okay. Ever had something that you were waiting for and at time seems to go really slow? When does that happen? Yeah. Waiting for a sleepover in school. Okay. Yes. When is... When you're going somewhere you've never been to, you... Can't, can't wait to go there, and time seems to go really slow. Okay, somebody yesterday said the end of the school day. <laughs> when you, I'm hearing I'm hearing some snickers from the high school kids. Maybe they're doing that too. They're watching the clock at the end of the school day. Okay, um, how about Christmas? Does Christmas seem to get here pretty slow sometimes? Yeah, if you're in December, sometimes it really seems to come slow. You ask it. Christmas yet? No, not yet. Okay. Time can go, sometimes, sometimes time can go pretty slow, but we still have to wait for the thing that we are looking forward to, right? Okay. Um, in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus was asked about something that was going to happen. Uh, he, he told people that uh, there was, you know, that there would be a time when the, the temple building in Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, and then Jesus would come back, and then he was going to take he was going to take his church to heaven. And his disciples wanted to know when is that going to happen. They kind of maybe they were kind of excited about going to heaven. I would be okay, but um, Jesus said, "Well, there's certain things that are going to happen, but the end is not yet. Okay, we have to wait. Okay, we have to wait for Jesus to come to take us, take us to heaven." We are waiting for that right now. Jesus could come today, right? Could he come today? Could he come and take us to heaven today? He could if he wanted to, but maybe he's going to wait. And we don't know how long he's going to wait. Could be a few days. Could be a few years. It could be longer than any of us will live. Okay? Could be we, we might all have, you know, have gone home to heaven, have died and gone to heaven before Jesus comes back. But he does promise that he is coming back. Okay? And when he comes back, he's going to take us to heaven. There was, in the first lesson, there's a beautiful picture of your name being written in the book. Okay? If your name is in the book, you are going to heaven because God knows your name is in the book. Oh, yeah, he can look. Oh, yeah, Ben, his name is in the book. He's going to heaven. Okay? Um, 
When did your name get written in God's book? You know? Yeah. When you were baptized. Yeah. God wrote your God said, You are my child. And he, he kind of wrote your name in his book so that as as if he needed help remembering. But it's in there. It is it is there so that you know and that he, that, that you know for certain that you are going to heaven. If you believe in Jesus, he died for your sins, he took them all away. And he promises that whoever believes in him will go to heaven. Whoever believes in is baptized will be saved, right? That's a verse that we learn in, in confirmation class. Okay. So your names are written in God's book. And when Jesus comes back, you will go to heaven. That's exciting news. Okay. And uh, we wait for it. But while we're waiting, what do you suppose Jesus wants us to do? Okay. Obey him. And one, one thing... One thing that happens if Jesus doesn't come back right away, he's probably giving other people time to come to know him. So what might we want to be doing? We might want to be telling other people about Jesus, right, in the time that we have. Because we don't know when he's coming back. So time to, it's time to tell other people about Jesus. Even if it's not quite time for turkey, it's only 1027. So, all right. Well, thanks for coming up today. We have a little fruit snack for you to take back. So uh, you may go back to your seats and we'll go ahead and sing the next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God on which we base our meditation this morning is the Gospel lesson from Mark chapter 13. And we hear again these words. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pain. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, not yet. When have you heard those words? Think back to when you were a child and you smelled something coming from the oven, the smell of delicious chocolate chip cookies. Mom, those cookies smell so good. Can I have one? Not yet. They have to stay in the oven a little longer. Or maybe it's planting season and you're anxious to get out in the field, but it has rained the last three or four days and the ground is all muddy and you reluctantly say, eh, not yet. Maybe you were very sick and maybe you even told the Lord, Lord, I'm ready whenever you want to take me home to heaven. But you're still here. So his answer was, not yet. Today's Gospel lesson begins with Jesus and his disciples leaving the temple on Tuesday of Holy Week, three days before Jesus would be nailed to the cross. One of his disciples says, Look, Jesus, look at these wonderful stones, these beautiful buildings. And Jesus says, Yes, they are beautiful. These buildings are all coming down. Not one stone will be left on another. The disciples are concerned, and they ask, When? Jesus' answer is basically, not yet. We are getting to the end of another church here. Our lessons start to focus on Jesus' return at the end of time. As Christians, we can look forward to Jesus' coming. It means we're going to heaven. And we know that Jesus could come at any time, right? He could come before I finish the sermon. He could come right now. But it looks like not yet. There have been Christians at various times who have been obsessed with when. In 1844, the Millerites made a prediction. Jesus is coming back this year. It didn't happen. In 1988, some friends and I were traveling through Kansas on our way to Colorado. We stopped to eat at a Dairy Queen and we were handed a pamphlet that said that listed 88 reasons why the world will end in 1988. When I got back to seminary that fall, a large church in Fort Wayne was preaching, it's going to happen. People were selling their possessions and having their pets put to sleep. And Jesus didn't come. In 2011, a Christian radio pro preacher pre purchased billboards and ads on the sides of semi-trucks proclaiming Jesus will return May 11, 2011 didn't happen. He revised his prediction to October 21st, 2011. It didn't happen. The next year people were anxious because the Mayan calendar predicted the end of the world in 2012. It didn't happen. Jesus was saying, not yet. We can't make it happen. Jesus will come when he is ready. That means we are to be ready for Jesus to come at any time. But it might be not yet. And if it's not yet, what are we to do as God's people? Jesus has some words of encouragement for us in our text. And the first thing he tells us is be on your guard. Be alert. Jesus predicts difficult days for his church before he returns. False prophets, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes and famines. In Matthew's account, Jesus adds pestilences which would include the pandemic. All of these things will happen, and they are happening now. 
But the end is not yet. These things, Jesus says, are just the beginning. They are like labor pains starting, but the baby isn't ready to be born. All of these things, along with the various kinds of sufferings experienced by believers at different times and places since the days of the apostles, are reminders that we are living in the last days before Jesus returns. Jesus tells us of these things in order to encourage us to hang on to what we have. The way to be ready is to hold on to Jesus, to con continue in what we have learned and believed, to continue hearing and believing God's Word, to continue receiving Christ's forgiveness and strength in Holy Communion, to hold on by faith to Jesus as our one and only Savior. Jesus could come at any time. The church throughout history has had the urgent expectation that Jesus is coming soon. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Now is not the time to neglect the Word of God, as our epistle says. Now is not the time to cut ourselves off from the fellowship of Christ and His church. When we lose that sense of urgency, we become complacent. We think that the things of this world are more important and the things of God can wait. But what if Christ comes today? We need to be ready. Jesus says, let no one deceive you. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. Some of us in our lifetime have heard of men like Jim Jones in Guyana and David Koresh in Waco, Texas, who convinced people that they were Jesus who had come back and then led their followers to a tragic end. We have seen preachers on TV accumulate large followings and then be exposed for their greed and fraud. There are pastors in Christian churches today who in who place human ideas above God's truth, who encourage people in their sinful behaviors, and who teach that you, can't, that you can be saved without Jesus. The false Christ and false prophets are out there. They always have been. Don't be deceived. And don't major in minors. It is enough to know that Jesus is coming. We don't need to know the how or the when. There are Christians obsessed with knowing the when, the date, there are Christians who take difficult passages about the end of time and create elaborate teachings about exactly how it will be when Jesus comes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when. It doesn't matter how. Jesus is coming. He will separate believers from unbelievers. The believers will go to heaven with him. What matters is that you are ready. And you are ready by faith in Jesus as your Savior. So I love the next word of encouragement from Jesus in our text. He tells us, do not be anxious. In the context of this verse, Jesus is telling his disciples not to be anxious about what they are to say when they are brought to trial on account of their faith in him. He says, say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who are speaking, but it's the Holy Spirit. In other words, God's got this. If, even if you are persecuted for your faith, even if you are arrested and put on trial for telling people about Jesus, you don't need to worry. You still belong to God, and He will guide you, even to the point of giving you the words you need to say. Do not be anxious. Don't worry about the when or the how. Even when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, even when you see famines and earthquakes and floods and fires happening around the world, even in the midst of a global pandemic that doesn't want to go away. God's got this. Jesus' coming is a good thing for believers. The end is not yet, but you have nothing to fear. You are His. You are a child of God in your baptism. He has claimed you as His own. He has written your name in His book of life. You are marked as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. His death on Calvary's cross was for you. His Easter victory over sin and death is for you. You have been raised with Him to live a new life and to await the day when not yet turns to now and you enter with Him into your forever home in heaven. Do not be anxious. God loves you. He gave His Son for you. Jesus has prepared a place in heaven for you and He's coming again to take you to be with Him forever. You can leave the when and the how to Him. He will come when He is ready. It could be now, or it could be not yet. 
The one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who remains faithful unto death will receive the crown of life. For now, Jesus is still saying the end is not yet. Not yet is a sign of God's grace. It means there is still time for those who have not yet heard the good news of Jesus or who have not yet come to faith in Him to repent and believe in Jesus as their Savior. For the church, it reminds us that there is an urgency to our mission. Not yet means there is still time for us to go out and proclaim the gospel so that people may believe in Jesus and be saved. How much time? We don't know. What does that tell us? Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to proclaim the good news in our families, among our friends, in the communities of Charter Oak and Ricketts and Dunlap and Mapleton and Ute and Denison and all over the world as we support the work of missionaries who tell about Jesus in places we are unable to go. Some years ago, there was a church in downtown St. Paul, Minnesota, known as the People's Church. At one time, its worship services were filled with people, but as the business, business district closed, attendance started dwindling until there were only a handful of worshipers there on Sunday. One winter night, the old church caught fire. Before the firemen could extinguish the blaze in the sub-zero temperatures, a large part of the church had been burned. Before the fire, the chancel of the church featured a life-sized marble statue of Jesus called the Appealing Christ. It would have been much like the statue that we have in our chancel here, but with Jesus' arms more to the side in invitation. During the fire, it had fallen through the floor into the basement, but by some miracle, it was undamaged. So after the ruins had cooled, the firemen retrieved the statue from the basement and placed it on the sidewalk next to the church. So as people walked by or drove by on their way to work, they saw the image of Jesus inviting them to come to me. Even if they had never been inside the church before, they now could see a picture of the church's message. This is the task of the church today. If Jesus says, not yet, it is because the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. The Jesus that we meet in church needs to be taken out into the world where people are. We are to proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes. And as of now, that is still not yet. But now is the time of God's grace. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You remain standing for the prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. With thanksgiving to God the Father for all his goodness, especially for making his everlasting covenant with us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that with every good work we may do his will and be pleasing in his sight, let us pray to the Lord. For the church throughout the world, that we may be ready at all times for Christ's glorious return, and that our Lord would give us zeal to proclaim his coming to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For all pastors and ministers, that they may preach the pure doctrine of God's saving word, which will never pass away. And that those who hear with faith may have the peace that passes all understanding. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For all in authority, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of the State of Iowa, and all judges, that God would graciously enable them to lead according to His will and for our good, let us pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for the fruits of the earth provided by God's hand, that He would supply the needs of all who grow, process, and distribute our food, and that we may be moved to share His bountiful gifts with our neighbors in their time of need, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and infirm, for the dying, for the recovering, and for all in need, especially Melvin Gosler, Rory Plough, Earl Schultz, Keith Stolze, Ivy Lee Kuhlman, Dorothy Grease, Blakely Christensen, Bob Stolze Jr., Sam Lee, Joan Nobby, who is hospitalized in Des Moines, Janet Pauley, Fenelda Westphalen, Marlon Jepson, Darren Meyer, Carol Meyer, Kenny Lally, Brett Beavers, the son-in-law of Larry and Jan Kettleson, Jeannie Kepi, the sister of Frank Kepi from Emmanuel, who is also hospitalized in the Des Moines area, the family of Shirley Swanson, who passed away this week, that's Becky Jepson's mother, who passed away this week and was given Christian burial yesterday. That in their distress, God would grant healing of body, patience to endure their afflictions, and comfort in the resurrection of, of Jesus our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Grant these and all our petitions, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. staying for the dinner, we will say the table prayer now and return thanks as well at the, at the same time. So uh, then when you go downstairs, you can go through the line and, and get your dinner. I think I believe they're serving on both sides of the line today. Uh, you'll find out, I guess, when you get down there. But, but uh, I think that's what they said was going to happen. So Let us join together in the common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let these gifts to us be blessed. 
O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Amen. The Lord's blessings on your day, and uh, enjoy your meal.